figure out, and quite often we make it way too complicated. Keep it simple, stupid, to make this, this work, because we're going to be bouncing back and forth, so you have to listen to each other. In improv, you can make up anything you want. No holds barred, nothing is taboo. We're going to try to keep it clean, because we've got kids here, we do. including me. All right? Uh, but other than that, you can go anywhere you want with the story. What you don't want to do, because it makes for a bad story, is conflict with something somebody has already said. The main character can be named anything, anybody, you, any, anything you want, but as soon as we know that it's Istvan the Flying Squirrel, then Istvan the Flying Squirrel is the character we're talking about. As soon as we can put the character, the, 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 the story anywhere we want, but as soon as we're in uh, Mother Russia, on the top of a mountain, that's where we are. We can travel off the mountain, but we can't suddenly be under the sea if we're on a mountain without traveling there. No Everybody with me? A story has a place, a person, or a thing that it's about. It could be Goldie the, the lucky goldfish. I don't care. Uh, a person or thing that it's about, a main character in other words, a place, and a conflict. Something happens to Goldie. Goldie gets swallowed by the giant whale. Ah! And then we got a conflict. When we solve the conflict, the story is over. We might have a sequel, but the story is over, and I'll ask for a moral. Now, how this is going to work is I'm going to blow the whistle because it's morning, and that helps us wake up. And then I'm going to point to somebody, and that person is going to start the story in a deep, dark cave in Mongolia uh, way back many, many years ago there was. Um, or, George was a rabbit, and the rabbits always carry Brussels sprouts. Whatever. Yes, and they pop them on the head. Whatever, however you want to start, and then I'll be whistling and pointing. Whenever I'm pointing at you, you continue the story. When, I'm, when my hand is away from you, you stop talking. Even if it's mid-sentence. Mid-word, mid-syllable. Right? Everybody got that? I know. All right. We need the title of a story that's never been written. <coughs> Achu said, What happens when guinea pigs make friends? Aww. What happens when guinea pigs make friends? This is a teaching story. <laughs> what happens when guinea pigs make friends? Istvan the guinea pig was sad because he didn't have any friends. So he decided that he was going to make some friends. So he got some clay and a little bit of glitter <laughs> and some precious stones. And because friends have to have heart, he got some little candy hearts. And and he pressed that into the clay and put them in the kiln, apologizing all the while because they were going to be his friends when they got out. And when, the, and when his friends were finished, he drew little eyes on them and named them Ringo, Stephen, and Asparagus. <laughs> but when the friends came out of the kiln, they were just cold clay and baked clay pots. They really couldn't be friends for him. So he went searching for the witch who lived in the woods because he knew she had the gift of life. Her name was Gulbahar, and she had the gift of life and a warm heart to go with it that she carried. Istvan said to Gulbahar, I have made these friends from clay, but since they're just clay, they're not very good friends. Okay? And so Gulbahar sent Istvan on a quest to find oregano. <laughs> And she told him that the oregano would be found under the sea, over a mountain, beyond the <laughs> desert, west of the moon and east of the sun. Now, when Istvan traveled west of the moon and east of the sun, over the high mountain and down to the deep sea, where he could, where he could avoid the ice that was all <laughs> over the river in Tajikistan that he did not cross. <laughs> <laughs> so, Pip found the oregano in the deepest part of the sea, and he brought it up, and he climbed the high mountain, and he traveled back to the witch's castle. And Gobathar said, this oregano is very soggy. I can't use this. So, he looked around and quickly discovered that in the witch's garden was a fish pond, and at the bottom of the fish pond was a mountain. 
And all around the fish pond was a strange herb that looked a great deal like oregano, but didn't smoke like it. <laughs> so he picked some and with its roots and planted it in the magic cranium yard of when he took the oregano and put it in the foreheads of his friends, they said, Isvan, we've been waiting for you. And the moral of the story is... Oregano, no, 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 unless you find it at the bottom of the sea. Uh -huh. <laughs> Take the bow!